I was thinking of wearing a tie. I thought that was a little too much, but I'm going to pull my collar up, do that, and uh, do that. <laughs> I'm Bobby Hutchison, and this is my night in the life. My morning routine is a little different. I get up in the morning, make myself a nice hot cup of coffee, watch a little bit of the news. Then I watch The Price is Right. I've been watching The Price is Right for must be 20 years. Then I go to my little office room, and my instrument's sitting there, and it's sort of like saying, hey, Bob, come on over here and play a couple notes. And I said, OK. Today, I'm going to the beach. Then I'm going to SF Jazz to see my son, Teddy, and Randall Klein. And later today, I have an interview with jazz journalist Andy Gilbert. I used to go to the beach when I was younger because uh, I loved to fish. I bought a Boston whaler. Everybody started hearing that I was fishing. And Ray Drummond, he started calling me Captain Bob. I worked in a lot of the clubs in New York, like Birdland, you know, the Half Note Slugs and places like this. Slugs, to me, was the real proving ground. Third Street between B and C, I mean, it was in the bowels of New York where you, you come in there and it's sawdust on the floor and there's gonna be people having fights. And you have to really make the people sit down and listen to the music. In those days, in order to work at a nightclub, you had to have a, what was called a cabaret card. The cabaret card, my cab license was taken away from me. And I uh, came back out to California, my hometown, Pasadena. Things had started to change a little. And I heard that uh, a friend of mine, Delano Dean, opened a jazz club in San Francisco called The Both End. When I came to San Francisco, I had already recorded a couple albums on Blue Note. So I, you know, I thought I was hot stuff. And I go to the both end, and there's a band playing, and I walk to the door, and Rosemary's standing there taking the tickets for people to come in. She says, ticket please. And I said, I don't need a ticket. She says, oh yes you do. She says, you wanna come in? I said, yes I do. She says, tickets please. I said, I don't need it. My name is Bobby Hutchinson. She says, I don't care who you are. And then Leno heard this, and he walked over, and he says, that's Bobby Hutchinson. He can come in. She says, oh, OK. Next night, I decided to come. Hi. Hello, tickets, please. I liked it the, the way that she wouldn't let me in. This beautiful girl, she's become even more beautiful since, since we've been together. We've been together for 41 years now. And she's, boy, I'm a lucky guy. Within maybe almost a year's time, the cabaret card was abolished in New York. And I got notice that I could come back and play again. I had started working with Harold Land. And so I told Harold, I said, I want you to join me and come back to New York and play, you know. And so we, we started uh, coming back and playing in slugs. From that, met a guy named Lutz Bacher. He enjoyed the group and we started touring Europe. And we were recording three to four albums a year on Blue Note at that point because Alfred wanted to hear all the new things coming out of our minds then because of the black revolution that was going on around in, all, in every city, you know. I grew up in Pasadena and New York became, you know, like a 
concrete city. And I, I, I had changed my way of living to being in New York. And then after a while, I wanted to come back and be with the trees and grass and, and do some other things that would influence my way of playing because you play what you eat. At that point, Randall heard about all of the music that was starting to happen and asked me to come and play here in San Francisco at SF Jazz. And at that time, it was called Jazz in the City. Herb's Theater was the very first, I may have met you before that, but it was the, the, that first, was the, that was the first gig. That the, was Jazz in the City? Jazz in the City, and it was a gig at the Green Room, and it was a duo, you and George Cables. Yeah. Yeah. And I can remember some of the repertoire for that night. Really? Yeah. After a while, Randall, he wanted me to come in and, and be part of the collective. With the collective, I was start, starting to say, well, I don't know how long I'll be able to do it. My health was changing. And when it started getting into touring, I, I wasn't a young man who could, you know, like live out of a suitcase anymore, you know. I have emphysema. I keep oxygen going all the time. I wanted to be home with trees and grass and be with my family, be on my boat fishing, make applesauce. I hope you musicians don't get mad because I make applesauce. I, <laughs> I have this apple tree, you know. I made some apple juice the other day that was just dynamite. I mean, you just put it in a juicer, oh man. Anyway, when I start playing, I always start with the most simplest thing, the C scale. I'm sure everybody gets really tired because they hear me all of a sudden. In the, and I go real slow when I start out. Da, 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 da. It's harder to play slower than it is to play fast, you know. And so at that point, I really try to understand how to pick my hands up how to bring them back down to the instrument, you know, how to snap them, how to use my wrists and forearms, how to be able to snatch a note out of the bar, how to pull the sound out, rather than just to hit the bar, you know, like if every instrument's got this, uh, take this sound out of me, you know, I'm just part of the mechanism, you know. Don't let me play you. I don't listen to my records. But I, 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 will, I will fall asleep and hear some of it in, in a nap, you know, and I'll say, oh yeah, I remember that. And really start thinking about the past. You know, you sit there and you, all of a sudden here, be, here comes all those, a lot of the recordings that you did a long time ago. It's a wonderful thing to, to, to have. I think that sometimes Russ might play something off to the side and just say, Why don't, how come you don't play this anymore? I say, oh, good idea. <laughs> good idea, honey. <laughs> what a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? 